Hi, today I'm going to show you how I take self-portraits on film. And for my photo today, I'm going to transform into a 1950s movie star. Ta-da! Here's my outfit and makeup. But actually, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. <laughs> Let me get back into my real clothes and tell you what you will need if you want to take a self-portrait on film. First of all, this goes without saying, of course you need a film camera. I'm using this one, which is a digital film camera, which can make things a little bit easier because you can often use the autofocus. However, if you only have an actual analog film camera, that's also totally fine. I'm going to tell you later what to do in that case. Next, of course, we need some film. I have a black and white film here, but you can use color, whatever you want. And in a moment, I will also explain which ISO you need. So really, that's all you need, a camera and film. But there are some optional accessories that will really make your job much easier. First of all, if you do have a digital camera that has adjustable settings, do get it out because that will help you a lot. It simply has to be any camera that has a manual mode rather than just auto mode. And then if you do have it, it can really help to get something like a tripod or a light stand that will help you focusing in your self-portrait. Our next optional accessory is a light meter. This one actually came with my analog camera. If you're using a digital film camera, you won't need it. But if your camera is fairly old and pretty basic, it will be nice for you to have a light meter. If you don't have an actual physical one, no problem. You can use a light meter app on your phone. I'll explain later how to do this. And then the last accessory that will really help you is a remote trigger. They look something like this. You plug them in. Um, they might not work if you have a very old analog camera in that case no problem. You can just use the self timer button. That's actually what I will do today. So you can watch me do that in a bit. Okay. So first of all, we need to know what film to use. As I said, you can use black and white or color. The one thing you need to choose before you shoot is the ISO. The ISO simply refers to how light sensitive the film is. So for example, today I will be shooting inside with artificial light, which is extremely bright. So I don't need a very light sensitive film at all because I have a lot of light available. So I could actually get away today with an ISO of 100. If you didn't have light like this available in your home, and if you're taking your photo inside, I would recommend you use at least ISO 400 or even 800. Just keep in mind that the higher the ISO, so the more light sensitive the film is, the grainier the pictures will be. Maybe you don't mind that, that can also be a nice look because it looks pretty retro. But if you go higher and higher, eventually it won't look that nice anymore. So in photography, usually you will try to use the lowest ISO you can get away with. And then one last tip, if you are shooting outside uh, and it's during the day, you know, you have a lot of daylight available, then you can also use ISO 100 or 200. Whereas if you're shooting more during twilight or even at night, then go up to 400 or 800. Then the next thing you need, of course, is an idea for your shoot. If you're a little bit stuck or you're feeling uninspired, I recommend you check out my free ebook. I'm going to link it below and it contains 50 self-portrait ideas. Okay, next let's talk about the actual camera settings you need for your shoot, but I'm gonna get back into my makeup because it's way more fun that way. Ta-da! Here we are. So let's talk about camera settings for your self-portrait on film. Okay, why do we even have to talk about camera settings? Well, because when you take a photo with a film camera, most likely you won't have auto mode available. I do have it because this is a fairly modern film camera, but most likely you will be using an older or analog film camera where you can't use auto mode. But you really don't have to be afraid of manual mode. It's really, really easy once you know what to do. So basically there are two methods for using manual mode. One is the cheating way and one is the correct way. Let's talk about the cheating way first because it's actually a lot easier and it's also beginner friendly. To do this, you do need a digital camera though, which has adjustable settings, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video. And then all you're gonna do is set up your camera, digital camera, Choose exactly the same ISO of the film you have in your film camera. This is super important. And then play around, take a few test shots with different settings. Then once you have an exposure you're happy with, you're going to copy the settings from your digital camera to your film camera. ISO, of course, is the same one because you have film in the camera that has the same ISO. And then you choose the shutter speed and aperture that you we're using in your digital camera. That's it. Now, if you don't have a digital camera or you don't want to cheat or you would just want to learn how to do it the correct way, then you do need most likely a light meter. A lot of more modern film cameras actually have an inbuilt light meter. For example, this camera has one. If your film camera is a bit older, perhaps analog, you might have something like this, which I showed you already, which is basically an external light meter. However, the easiest way that I would recommend you do because it's very beginner friendly and also these sort of light meters can often be broken if you buy a secondhand camera, is to actually use an app on your phone, as I mentioned. And then how it works is that you use this app on your phone to measure the light you have available in your space 
and then the light meter app will tell you what shutter speed and what aperture to use. Of course, at the fixed ISO of your film, so you have to also input that. I'm going to link an option for a light meter app in the description below. And I'm also going to link a great article which explains you exactly how to use a light meter. It's really easy, don't be intimidated by it. It takes five minutes to learn it. Okay, and then the next thing you have to do is actually just get into position and start taking photos. But wait, how do you avoid this? That's right, we haven't actually talked about how to focus on yourself when you're taking a self-portrait on film, which can be a little bit tricky. One of the standard ways to get the focus right is to use some kind of object as a stand-in. I like to use a tripod or a light stand, but you can also just use a chair, whatever you have available. And then you place that object exactly where you're going to sit or stand in your photo, focus on it manually. Normally you can do that by turning a little uh, ring on your camera lens, remove the object and stand or sit in exactly the same place. Just a couple of bonus tips. Make sure that the shutter speed of your camera is set to at least 40th of a second, so you don't get motion blur, as in, so you don't look blurry in the photo. And also it always helps to use a slightly smaller aperture. If you use a very large aperture, something like 1.8, um, two point whatever, range or the plane where things are sharp is much smaller, much narrower. Whereas if you use an aperture like eight or something, you're gonna have a much wider range that's sharp. So it's more likely you will actually be sharp as well. Okay, so you're finally ready to take that photo, but how do you actually take the photo? Because after all, you can't be behind the camera and in front of the camera at the same time. So the easiest and most basic way is to use the self timer button on your camera Every camera has one, even super old analog cameras should have one. Or as I've mentioned before, you can also use an actual wireless or wired trigger. This one is obviously for a digital camera. However, if you do have a super old analog camera, there are special cable releases you can buy. They work in a mechanical way and that can also be much easier than having to get up all the time and pressing the self timer button. Okay, and then it was finally time to take my self portrait. I always try lots of different poses to make sure I have at least one good shot in there. And then of course, it's time to take your film to the lab and here's the final image. See you next time.